Uh, hello, everyone. And I think this is a first for me. I don't think I've ever done a presentation on a boat before, so <laughs> good to see. Also, I'm going to put it out there, Robert, that we should uh, name the French file coin Corgi Profiterole. You heard it here first. <laughs> anyway, uh, good to meet you all. I am Ali. I'm a developer relations engineer uh, with the Filecoin Foundation. And today I'm really excited to share a project that is going to be, I think, super valuable and super impactful for not just the Filecoin ecosystem, but it definitely will be, but also uh, for the wider Web3 community. Uh, and that is the Lilypad project, or well, network now. And yes, that is a hint. Um, uh, I just want to give some credit to the team as well. I don't work alone. Um, I want to credit uh, Luke and Kai, our amazing engineers on this project. Levy, our uh, game theorist and researcher, and David for his uh, amazing leadership and expertise here. Um, so the agenda, firstly, I just want to like backtrack a little bit, recall the Filecoin vision and why this fits into that. <laughs> Nextly, I'll tell you what Lilypad actually is. And then I want to give you a little bit of a demo and uh, tell you what Lilypad empowers and why it's important. Uh, so to set the scene, the Filecoin vision. Uh, so as you're all likely aware, here at Filecoin and Protocol Labs, we have a mission. And that mission is to build the foundation for a decentralized internet. And that uses four key components here. So. Uh, so far, we've built out the largest decentralized storage network globally in Filecoin, and that is not an uh, easy feat, so that is already a great achievement. We then laid it on uh, with powerful programmability with the FBM, who you heard about earlier. Uh, the Filecoin sat and retrieval market is also really well underway uh, to allow for fast move faster movement of data across the globe and even planets in the future, who knows. And the fourth pillar of this decentralized internet is really computation. So to me, this is where data becomes truly useful. Um, so after all, an LLM is, not, is nothing without the ability to kind of compute over and train on data sets, and this is one thing that we're hoping to achieve. So it's really my strong view uh, that distributed computing will unlock this next generation of truly like web scale decentralized applications and bring the power of this robust uh, compute to Filecoin and to Web3. Uh, so this fourth pillar is where Bakuya, uh, some of you may have heard of, and Lilypad live. So just in case Bakuya isn't familiar to you, Bakuya is a peer-to-peer -peer open network uh, of nodes uh, that do computation. And it kind of enables you to run arbitrary Docker containers or WASM uh, images as tasks against data and to analyze large data sets while bringing this benefits of open collaboration on data sets stored in both IPFS and Filecoin uh, to generic compute tasks. Pretty powerful already. Um, so if Bakuya already does peer-to-peer -peer distributed compute, what is Lilypad? Well, Lilypad kind of leverages the power of Bakuya and combines it with on-chain guarantees and crypto economic incentive models. So, much like Filecoin is to IPFS, Lilypad is to Bakuyao as a simple kind of analogy. It's not quite true, but pretty close. So it's bringing incentives and guarantees to the network. Uh, so for those of you that may have been following Lilypad previously, uh, you might remember the original proof of concept project we built out that operated as a relayer for calling Bakuyao off-chain compute jobs and receiving the results directly in your smart contract. And that was deployed to the FBM and some other networks as well. So this was really a precursor to the on-chain Lilypad network, or Lilypad V1, which uh, leverages Bakuya and key features of blockchain for secure scheduling, for verification, and for payments, both for jobs and the network nodes. Uh, so with Lilypad V1, we're definitely aiming bigger. We want to build a trustless distributed compute network that enables internet-scale uh, data processing, uh, including AI, ML, and other arbitrary comp uh, computation, and allow that to be callable from smart contracts, so with blockchain guarantees. We also want to make sure that we can unleash this idle processing power and unlock the, like a new wave of data and compute economies in Web3. Um, so this is a decentralized compute network where jobs can be called from a smart contract and where the jobs can consume input data. So it's really unlocking uh, the next generation of these decentralized applications. 
Uh, so today I'm really excited to tell you as well that the team has definitely just released the Lilypad V1 testnet. Uh, so initially we have uh, released this testnet uh, called Lalachooza. Uh, on Geth, uh, but the idea is that actually we'll be building on IPC, which is a scaling network for Filecoin, and this will be our path to network uh, to mainnet. But we wanted to allow builders to be able to play around with this network, uh, contribute modules, uh, and add to it in the meantime. So we built it on a, a Geth network just so people can play around with it while we build it out further. <laughs> All right, this is the architecture for Lilypad V1 at the moment. Uh, we based it loosely on uh, this research paper, which uh, enables modicum, which is kind of adding um, mechanisms for scheduling jobs, uh, mediating those jobs, making sure people do the right thing on the network, basically. Uh, but we've replaced some of the components with Bakuyao because Bakuyao is already a super, um, super powerful uh, distributed compute network. All right, I'm going to show you the code now. Here's some of the things you can already do with the Lilypad network. Uh, so firstly, we've decided that Kause should be the hello world of Lilypad, just for no reason other than we liked it. Uh, so this is what you would uh, do in the CLI. You would just go Lilypad run Kause, hello Lilypad. The output would be an IPFS CID, and there's the uh, image there. Now you can do the same thing in a smart contract. Uh, but here's the CLI version of Stable Diffusion. So Stable Diffusion is a text-to-image generator. You can also run this in the CLI, or you can run it on a smart contract, which we also have a demo of online. I think I'm pretty low on time, though, so <laughs> I won't show you this, but if you go to our YouTube, which is our Lilypad Network on YouTube, you can go and have a look at how you would call Stable Diffusion from a smart contract as well. Right. The next thing that we're going to have implemented, and it will be implemented by tomorrow, according to the engineers, so pretty exciting, is uh, being able to fine-tune uh, a uh, model on, with LoRa on um, our network. So this is kind of really cool because not only are you adding input data, not only are you getting data back, sorry, you're not just running an inference AI, but you're adding input data to this. So you can get out images like this from LoRa, which is pretty cool. And you can run those from IPFS. So Lilypad also uh, recently participated at Augment Hack, which is a decentralized AI hackathon here in Paris. It actually finished yesterday. And it was really cool because this guy, Leo, actually contributed a new module to Lilypad, uh, an LLM inference module. So you can also run LLMs on Lilypad. All righty. Uh, one of our other use cases that is coming up as well is Filecoin data prep. So the Filecoin data prep module is going to allow users who are onboarding data sets to Filecoin to outsource this CPU intensive work of chunking the data into car files and generating the metadata files to compute nodes on Lilypad. So these nodes will read the data from any S3 compatible endpoint and make the resulting data available on IPFS or soon via high-performance direct HTTP download. So this will be for use, be able to be immediately used in Filecoin deal making and hopefully will um, make the process more efficient as well. And of course, because this is a network of nodes, you can run your own node on the Lilypad network. Now, you'll only get paid in testnet ETH at the moment, so <laughs> it's probably not worth it, but hey, it's fun. Uh, so why does all this matter? Uh, not just to Filecoin, but to the wide, wider Web3 world. Uh, I think I'm going to have to be quick here. So <laughs> firstly, the capability for decentralized AI with distributed networks is one of our major whys. So in the same way that one person shouldn't control access to social media or one company should not control access to your data or to scientific breakthroughs, uh, central entities should not control access to AI advancements or to the data involved in them. So AI has this immense potential uh, to provide benefit to humanity and common hu human goods shouldn't really be gatekept. So in fact, we should probably all be stakeholders in its future. Uh, and I'd recommend, if you want to hear like, more about why I think that, check out this talk by uh, Peter Wang, who uh, describes this why much better than I will. Um, so what's also interesting to me is that according to this looped 
leaked, sorry, Google article, it's also clear that open source AI and ML is already out competing the centralized versions because they are able to define use cases and fine tune more easily on less data. So they're also able to target where this co common good lies better. So one of the issues though for open source AI is access to GPUs. So this is a key problem for open source AI and ML to be competitive. And DPIN, a decentralized physical infrastructure networks, uh, like Filecoin, uh, can really help solve this. Uh, it's also markets like uh, file, sorry, markets like Filecoin and marketplaces like uh, Lilypad, which enables coordination layers for matching CPU or GPU with supply, are usually generally more efficient uh, and better at pricing, and also better at distribution. Uh, so some capabilities, I'm going to... Uh, here's some of the uh, ways we think it can help the Filecoin compute uh, unlock Filecoin compute applications as well. For example, uh, Zach earlier was talking about data DAOs in the Filecoin ecosystem. So we can now bring the ability for decentralized AI and ML to those data DAOs, which could you know, be really powerful as well. We're also, as we mentioned, trying to make uh, easier data processing and preparation for Filecoin deals. And we're, uh, you know, trying to imagine enabling secondary income streams for SPs and idle GPU uh, resources in the network as well. Uh, and look, AI is amazing, but it's definitely bringing its own challenges. And we think blockchain uh, can help try and tackle some of those challenges as well. Uh, in fact, we made a proof of concept called waterlily.ai that tries to tackle the attribution problem. Uh, so a lot of the time, these artists' uh, kind of works are just stolen and used in data sets, and then people generate text-to-image text models, uh, and there's no attribution for the original creators. Uh, so with Waterlily, we were trying to uh, match up uh, giving attribution back to these artists uh, by paying, you know, a small, uh, by paying them all fees for everyone that, uh, sorry, runs a stable diffusion image on Waterlily. Uh, next for Waterlily, uh, we're going to keep building, obviously. Uh, these are some of our goals. Uh, and our future roadmap, as I mentioned before, includes uh, releasing IPC testnet. And following on from that, uh, we're going to, you know, obviously get to mainnet at some point. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thank you. That's, that's all from me. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, these are all the socials, so feel free to reach out. But otherwise, thank you. And looking forward to Once Talk too. <laughs>